This week we're taking a look at a very interesting and inexpensive airbrush. This is called the Neo Frywata. I bought this model back in around 2011, 2012 when it just came out and I honestly haven't used it much. And that's nothing against the airbrush itself. I just have a bunch of them and bought this as a backup. So within this video, I'm gonna show you why I think this is one of the most unique airbrushes out there. The Neo Farawada is equipped with a 0.35 millimeter nozzle. A nozzle size like this is great for all around airbrushing. If needed, you can reduce your paint to spray in all those fine details. And also if you wanna use paint right from the bottle, thicker opaque paints and base coats will spray fine through this airbrush. The first interesting thing about the Neo Frywata is that it has a removable paint cup. For an airbrush at this price, this is almost unheard of. This is a feature you'd see in some higher end airbrushes like the Harder and Steambeck Infinity. Equipped on it right now is a smaller paint cup, which is three milliliters, but this also can be swapped out for the larger one, which is seven milliliters. Both of these paint cups come with the airbrush, so you don't have to buy them separately. And they both have a small gasket at the bottom to prevent any paint from leaking out. Both of these paint cups actually fit onto the Infinity CR Plus. I don't recommend doing this, but it's an option if you need it. The rear handle has no extra features like a needle stop or a quick flush. For me, this is no problem because I always remove all the handles on my airbrushes before painting, but I'm aware that some people like the extra features on the rear handle, so I just wanted to point it out in this review. So let's move along to a quick breakdown so you can see all the internal parts of the Neo. After removing the cup, the rear handle, and the needle, we have access to the spring assembly. The spring assembly has a very narrow thread to it, so you have plenty of room to adjust the tension on the trigger. I generally recommend tightening this down pretty tight just so it gives you a better seal between the needle and the nozzle. This spring assembly consists of three parts, and one thing I like is that that lever is connected to this so that you don't lose it. It also makes it a lot easier to disassemble the airbrush. This is a feature I always like to see. Another very unique feature is the design of this trigger. As you can see on the bottom of it, it's rounded off in a sphere shape. I don't think I've seen this design in any other airbrush I've used, and it seems to work very well. When you press down for air, this ball presses on the piston to release air into the airbrush. And also it feels very comfortable when you pull back for paint. The top of the trigger is that round shape, which is kind of the standard for all airbrushes. After unscrewing the nozzle cap, we're gonna see something else that's interesting. We could see here that the nozzle doesn't have any sort of regulator on it. When you press down on the trigger, air is released from this hole to spray over the nozzle. And in most other brands of airbrushes, you have a regulator here that regulates the air to spray through about three to five holes over the nozzle. So this nozzle design seems much simpler than what we see in other brands, but as you'll see in the painting test, it doesn't affect the spray patterns at all. Unfortunately, the airbrush is equipped with a screw down nozzle and these are annoying just because they're so easy to break. If you keep your airbrush clean, you'll most likely never have to remove the nozzle. But if you're replacing it or you have some dried paint in it that you need to clean out, I definitely recommend picking up one of these tools made by Iwata. This is a small nozzle wrench and it does a great job at holding the nozzle in place as you unscrew it. I'll have a link for this nozzle wrench down below in the video description. Since this airbrush is 10 years old and I haven't used it, I'm replacing the nozzle and the needle with brand new ones. This way the airbrush will work like a brand new one for the paint tests. So I'd have to say that the build quality of the Neo is pretty good. You know, it's not going to be up there with higher end brands like Harder and Steambeck or Iwata, but I'd say that it's on par with most Badger airbrushes and it's definitely better than any of those cheaper no name brand airbrushes that you get on Amazon. I definitely don't have any complaints with the build quality. So from here, let's move along to a few spray tests. Spraying at 20 PSI with the needle fully retracted, we could see here in Photoshop that we get a spray angle of 18.2 degrees. For an all around airbrush, this is a very good number. It's not as tight as you'd get from a Micron or an Infinity, but you can see that it's a smaller number than the Iwata Eclipse. With a spray angle like that, you should have no problem getting in spraying fine lines and details. One of my favorite features of the Neo is the airspeed. Spraying at 20 PSI at three and a half inches away, I get an airspeed of four meters per second. Now this airbrush isn't marketed or sold as a detail airbrush, with a number like four meters per second, we can see that it's in line with the Micron and the PS771. That means you'll be able to get very close to the subject that you're painting and not have to worry about that air blowing back. And if you're going in for fine details, that air blowback can be very distracting and annoying. So if you're looking for a detail airbrush under $100, the Neo might be a pretty good option. And a nice feature about a larger spray angle like this is that 
You're not going to be forced to have to only use over-reduced paint. You could even spray thicker paints, you know, right out of the bottle. The response rate on this airbrush is outstanding. When I press down for air, we get a distance of 1.5 millimeters. So this distance to get air is a little bit more than other airbrushes, but to me, it still feels very comfortable. When I pull back for paint, the distance is almost instant. When I measure it here, I get about a half of a millimeter. Like I said in my other airbrush reviews, these numbers are so small that it's difficult for me to measure but this feels very similar to the Iwata Eclipse to me. I'm very picky about the response rate of an airbrush. I think that's probably the most important feature. And the Neo's response rate is right up there with the other top airbrushes like the Micron, the PS771, the Sotar 2020, and the Iwata Eclipse. When I use some soapy water to check the nozzle for some leaks, unfortunately, this airbrush is not good. I even tested this a few times off camera and I tightened the nozzle using some soft drop pliers. And unfortunately, this nozzle leaks a lot. So if you pick this one, up, you're also going to have to buy some beeswax and add that onto the threads to seal it up. If you buy a new one today, hopefully this problem is fixed. As I mentioned earlier, this airbrush is over 10 years old. Some beeswax is good to have on hand just for any airbrush threads, and I really like the product made by Badger, so I'll have a link for that down below. So from here, let's move on to a simple paint test. It's very easy to paint thin lines with the Neo, and you're going to get the same line width as you'd get from any other airbrush, right around 0.25 to 0.3 millimeters. As we move along to this simple paint test, I want to give a big thank you to Jeremy and Dwayne, both who subscribed as Tier 2 members to this channel. That's very generous of you guys, so thank you so much. For this paint test, I'm spraying at 20 PSI using Createx Illustration colors right from the bottle. I didn't dilute them or use any sort of reducer. This painting test is much more like a sketch than an actual painting. I'm just using it to try to get a feel of this airbrush. The first thing I want to mention that I love about it is that response rate. I pull back the smallest amount and it releases the same amount of paint every single time. This is a must for any airbrush. If it's not responsive, it's really not worth your money. As I'm painting this, you'll see that I'm using a ripped piece of paper as a shield. You really notice the low airspeed when you're using a shield like this because you don't feel it trying to blow that piece of paper around. It's staying put and you just feel like you have a lot of control. If you compare this to a true detail airbrush like a Micron, you could definitely tell that it's spraying more paint. And there's no question that that spray angle feels wider than what you'd get from a detail airbrush. If I wanna get some detail, I really have to get close to this one, very similar to the Iwata Eclipse. With something like a Micron, you can back up a little bit farther and you just feel like you have uh, more control because you're spraying a thinner line at a farther distance. But for me personally, if this was the only airbrush I had, I think I'd be happy with it because this is really one of those airbrushes that can do it all. You can get in and spray those micro details. And also when you want to spray some thicker paint, it doesn't have any problem with it. So moving on to this next test, I'm using golden fluid acrylics directly from the bottle. Now, if anyone used these paints before, you'll know that they're pretty thick and you need to dilute them before spraying them. But I wanted to test them out and see how this airbrush performs. When I'm spraying a thick paint, I generally reach for um, an airbrush with a wider nozzle like the Eclipse, but this airbrush is a perfect alternative if you want something a little bit less expensive. It atomized the heavier paint perfectly. I didn't notice any sort of clogs or anything like that or spitting. It just did a great job spraying the paint. Now this is an art channel, but I know that a lot of people who watch these airbrush reviews paint models and miniatures. So if you're looking to get into airbrushing and you wanna do everything from base coating to fine detail, this is a great option. And anyone who's in the art field looking to start, you know, maybe painting some landscapes or some portraits, this is a great starter airbrush for you guys as well. The Neo Fry Wada costs around $60. And to me, this is an absolute steal. I'd say this and the Badger Sotar 2020 are probably the two best deals in airbrushing today. For anyone who wants to get into airbrushing and doesn't have a very high budget, I think the Neo for Iwata is probably the best airbrush you could buy today for the price. And if you're an intermediate or an advanced painter, this is a great airbrush to have as a backup. So for those of you who are looking to buy this airbrush, I hope this video is helpful. That's gonna do it for this review. Next week, we're going back to some painting lessons. So I hope to see you guys back then. Thank you so much.